Pedro from Me and P Reacts. I'm, I'm here today with the iconic, the legendary Max Cavalera of Soulfly. Not to talk about Soulfly, to talk about Return Beneath Arise, the tour that he's on with his brother Igor. How's things going with you? Great, man. Good to see you again. Uh, everything is going great, man. We started the tour and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun playing those fast, crazy, angry songs. <laughs> Uh, let me let me start with that. What is the driving force behind you guys sitting down and saying, you know what, it's time for one of these tours. Let's get back together. Let's get on a bus and let's do a tour. I mean, the main thing is that we are here. We are alive. You know, we can do it. So why not? It's like it's a fun thing. It's kind of like you know, we made those records 30 years ago, and I don't see why you could not enjoy this. The, the the fruits of your of your labor you know like we we put a lot of work in this in the songs in these records and um you know a different thing has happened but i'm i'm one of those few artists that are blessed and lucky enough that i get to do that with my brother you know and uh and it's just there's something about that era and those records hits people hard you know it goes right to right to the heart man it's it's kind of hard to put in words you know it's difficult to to explain to people what it is but there's there's definitely a the magic is a cheesy word but i don't know any other word so i'm gonna go with magic there's definitely some magic when me and igor are together and we're playing those songs. It's it's like it's really really cool, unique. It's 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 very very powerful, and uh, we we really just really enjoy and have fun with it. Man. That's like and that's the bottom line, to to really enjoy what you what you did thirty years ago. You get to do it now, you know. You mentioned that you were one of the few guys that's blessed to play with your own brother. Uh, how is that dynamic uh, when you guys hit the road playing these shows? Do you reminisce a little bit about the past and how it was 30 years ago, or you just try always. to enjoy the present? No, always it's jokes. So we tell you, you know, uh, it's always fun. Remember old things, and and uh, and uh, we got uh, we got also you know Mike playing bass. Uh, he's from Soulfly, of course, and was in Havoc. Uh, and we got Daniel, man, from Possessed. And uh, and that's uh, that's really killer, man. Daniel is a great guy, and uh, so we we uh, it's kind of fun because he's he's also a big fan of this era, you know. Like he he loves this record. I can I can see in his eyes, you know. And so sometimes I'm hanging out with Igor, and we just start telling stories from back in the day, and uh, you know everybody kind of campfire stories you know <laughs> except he's in the front of the bus you know <laughs> but uh yeah all you're missing is the fire and the marshmallows but uh, the stories the stories are there <laughs> <laughs> you, you said that it's hard to put to words what these albums uh represent i know as a fan i got into metal because of those two records because of you uh so i i, I get where you're coming from but when you sit down with igor and you guys talk about the work that went into beneath the remains and arise are you guys able to narrow it down to what made these records so iconic, not just with fans, but with the metal world in general? Well, I think they're, even though they're very similar records, uh, I think there's a there's a slight difference between Beneath the Remains and Arise. And uh, the way I see it, at least in my, in my head, Beneath the Remains is a bit more desperate. You know, it's kind of a, it was, it's one of those, make it or break a record. I've done two of those in my life. Uh, Beneath the Remains and Soulfly One. Those are very hard rock records to make. There's a lot of pressure. It's, uh, you gotta give it all, you know, you gotta really bring it uh, because any of those records fail, your career pretty much done, you know, you're not, you're not getting another shot. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's, that's how important. And that's how, um, and I think Beneath the Remains was, was very raw in the, the whole production. It was, it was recorded at night. It's a nocturnal record. I never done a, a, another nocturnal record. I was joking. So I should do one now. It'd be fun. But, you know, we recorded from midnight to seven in the morning. 
And I think Scott Burns captured that state of mind or that des desperation state of mind. We had to be really good, you know, so we're like sharpening the tools and making the songs as, as powerful, as good as they can be. Now, Arise is where we kind of like, we relax a little bit. Believe the Remains succeeded. We had a great reaction, great tour. Now, how can we make Believe the Remains better? You know, so that's what came in on making Arise. That is the improved version of Believe the Remains. The songs got a little better, a little better songwriting, a little catchier. The, the grooves are, are more are stronger. Uh, but yeah, they're very similar record. I, I consider them to be brother records, you know, they're those two, especially uh, out of the whole discography. I think those, maybe you can argue, Bastio and Morbid Divisions are pretty similar, kind of like black, the Black Metal era. Uh, but that, I don't know, it's, uh, there's, 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 it affects so many people, you know, I was, I was talking to, to Daniel that this is one of also his gateway. It's like, it's like a gateway drug. <laughs> this records are, you know, you, 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 do, you do, you do them. You're going to do a whole bunch of other ones, but starts with this, you know, hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. So I think the, the gate, the, the gateway drug definitely is not a bad, it's, it's actually a good, a good definition of them. Um, and I think many other musicians feel like that. Talk to the 200 Step Boon guys, the same. Chase from Gate Creeper, the same. Started with Beneath the Remains, man. And then went down the whole rabbit hole, you know, found all the, all the you know, Maury Sound stuff. And then later on, uh, European stuff, you know. Well, so I'm very proud of this record for that. You know, it's, 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 it's good to know as... as Influence on it, and it's still influencing people today, man. That's that's what's more most yeah. badass. I was actually just going to ask you that because I mean, these albums are thirty plus years, and they're not just in. They, they didn't just influence the generation of thirty years ago. There's still young kids picking up these records now and being influenced uh, by their sound. So is that is that something that that stays with you? That that hits you hard in the heart that new fans of metal are still picking up these records and being influenced by them today? Oh, for sure. For sure yeah i mean it's like to me it's so cool when you get you talk to a young uh it can be a, a young fan or it can be a a young band member and like the the you know 200 step one guys like oh and the singer you know he's uh such so um openly loves these records you know and and we see a lot of these young guys in the audience too you know um, you know, yesterday I made I made the, I made the reference of the show. I said, you know, like we 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 used to play this song. It was our first song on the set back in '89. It was Primitive Future. How many of you you, you know with we, we toured with Fate or Fear? How many of you were there? It was like uh, the whole place had your hands up. I'm like, uh, some of them were there, but not the whole place, you know. So like those like young kids with 15 years old with his hands up, you know. <laughs> you weren't even made yet, man. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just want to so, have that. that I, I, uh, yeah, they. I think they love it, man. And I think it's cool. I mean, I heard that this. This that was, that was crazy. I was on a just just looking at stuff on the internet the other day, and I found this guy. It was a post from this guy, and he's like a famous. Uh, country music, jazz, Jason Isbell, you know, he's big in the country world. And he's, the post was, my, my daughter is five years old and all she listened to is Max Cavalera era Sepultura. <laughs> yeah, I cannot stop her from doing that, you know. <laughs> I thought that was funny, you know, like, oh, that's crazy. That's, this poor guy's been tormented by his five-year daughter listening to Cavalera era Sepultura. <laughs> Great, good work, Max. <laughs> <laughs> you you've corrupted another young mind. Oh yeah, five years old. That's how it starts. Let's go. <laughs> oh man, it's it's cool. It's cool. I love to see that. And uh, and like I say, I have my my feet on both things all the time, man. Which is cool. Like I'm I'm uh, of course working on new Soul Fly. I saw your uh, reaction of superstition, by the way. 
killer. Thank you Thank for the support, you. brother. Always, always, always man, always. Yeah, yeah really great. Uh, yeah, we're, so we're really excited for that. And uh, working on more Go Ahead and Die, Killer BQ, uh, maybe a, a new a Cavalera EP in the future. Um, but though, yeah, we had the little, little, this little window to do this tour and uh, revisit these records. We say, why not? Let's do it. You know, this is great. And I, I get to uh, hang out with my brother and tour with him. That's always fun, you know. So we, we're here and uh, very excited. Too bad there's no Canada dates, man. I was saying too bad, too bad there's no Toronto date. I would love to see you guys up here. I haven't seen you up right. here since Soulfly, like, I don't know, three years ago, something like that, right before the pandemic. Yeah, I almost, I almost gave you COVID, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's a great fucking story. That's all. That's a great about. story. Yes, I love it. I loved it. It was fun. I was laughing my ass off. Like, oh my God, this is so funny. This is cool. <laughs> it was but, yeah. I, it's just a great story. Like I came home, I told my wife, and she's like, "You're nuts." And I'm like, "You know what? If I'm gonna die, uh, a hug from Max is probably the best way to go." There you go, man. <laughs> uh, but we, when well, you say you got it later, right? You end up getting later. Uh, yeah, I got it like a month, month ago, about a month ago. So, but it was. Yeah. It, I'm vaccinated, so it wasn't that bad, and uh, the whole family got it. But we're we're kind of over it right now. So, uh, that, that's that's the. Yeah, I've been, I've been pretty lucky. Yeah, I've been pretty lucky. I think uh, I don't. I don't think I, I even actually even got it, which is like like crazy. Like most people around me, they had at least once. You know, um, I must be made of some crazy Brazilian. It must be all that the bad stuff I put in my body. You know, like the, the COVID came. It's like no, I'm not going in there. I'm out. <laughs> Uh, but yeah man you know uh, it's it's cool like uh just just hopefully that we do a second i think we're gonna do a second run of this we we can have toronto and hopefully uh, more more canadian tours you know yeah i would love to see you guys appear as soon as possible i'd love to see you guys perform and and, and speaking of performing i want to ask you from from these two records beneath the remains and rise what are your favorite songs like if you could pick one what is your favorite song from each record to play live on this tour right now uh sarcastic existence we just added it, so it's brand new. We were listening to some of the book. Uh, Daniel has bootlegs. It's crazy. He's got all these old bootlegs from the '90s, you know. And so we were listening to it, and there was a great version of somewhere in Europe, man, you know. And uh, sarcastic is on it. So we added to the show because we didn't have it last time. Uh, so that's that's like my favorite you know we we uh it, it was funny because we were learning the song and igor is writing everything down because he's got a he's got his own method it's, it's, it's kind of cool it's kind of like dave lombardo i think he told me dave lombardo does the same and he calls things by names the beats so there's like you know the motorhead beat the slayer beat you know the the rock and roll beat whatever you know uh, so he was doing that one. He got it's real big. So he's we, we call it the the Ten Commandments of Sarcastic <laughs> Existence. <laughs> so so that became the, the the nickname of of, of of the thing. Now is the Ten Commandments of Sarcastic Existence. But because he's got so many fucking parts, man, you know. Uh, but but that's what what's that's what made it cool, right? That's what mm -hmm. Daniel said. That Daniel's like, this is what made the songs cool. You guys had all these all these parts. You had the same riff, but you modified it a little bit the second time. You play around, you play the same riff, slightly different. You're like, you're missing one. You're not using the whole riff. You're using a, a riff and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. You know, it's, and we try to learn them properly, you know, like really to the T. So, because fans want to hear, you know, as, as, Close your region, original as it can I, get. I was going to, I was going to ask you that because, like, you, I mean, these songs have been around for such a long time. You guys have played them live so many times. So I was actually going to ask you, do you guys change things a little bit? Because now maybe, maybe you're playing and you're like, you know what? Back then it sounded really good this way, but if I change this just a little bit, I could make this a little bit better. Do you, do you do any of that, or you just try to stay as close to to the original as possible? We we're staying close to the original as possible, especially like the solos. Daniel Skilly on the solos is like. To me, it's, it's like I'm listening to the record. It's incredible, but uh, I think some some within the within the wisdom that you gain of of, of uh, 
maturing, right? Musically maturing, you become more aware of things. Um, even when you're listening to a lot of those bootlegs, everything is real fast. Everything is fast. Um, so we decided that sometimes there is some stuff that should be slowed down a little bit. So it, 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 it matches the original. The original was slower. Mm -hmm. So for example, the best example is uh, that embryonic cells, the breakdown. You know, if, if that breakdown is too fast, it kind of loses the, the heaviness and the groove. So on purpose, we when we get to that, I, I normally like, like I lock eyes with Igor and be like, I bring it down now, you know, so and when the, when we go in, it's super heavy. Um, yeah, so you, you you get to do things like that when you when you when you gain experience and, and that makes the song better. Uh, but all in all, uh, it's just fun to play this stuff, man. I, I, to me, this the, the reaction of the fans is, is what it gives me goosebumps, you know, just watching them. There was, there was like it was like a, there was a girl crying like on the left side of the stage and like you could see the the true passion that she's feeling right there at the moment you know it's like real tears man it's like really feeling man it's like wow this is some this is some powerful stuff uh, and then you get all the you know the, the circle pit moshing people <laughs> going nuts you know uh you get it all you know so yeah it's it's uh i'm glad we're, we're actually playing more stuff we are planning to even add more i think by the time by next week we will be playing it's kind of like 90 percent of each record oh wow that's a big yeah. set list. and uh yeah yeah it's it's a big one might be an hour close to an hour and 40 or something because we still got some cover songs stuff that we do in the end um but it, it, it it's so fun like they say right time flies when you're having fun the shows they just go fast man you know you go you go in there they don't drag they don't drag at all like next thing i know I, we already on a rise like what happened to beneath if the remains <laughs> when it was like it took took like a minute and we went through the whole beneath if the remains you know and uh yeah it, when you're having fun it just goes fast but it's very enjoyable very uh Especially with this, uh, with this group of guys, uh, with with Mike and Daniel and Igor, uh, it's solid, man. It sounds fucking great. I really, really excited for this tour, you know. And there's a lot of really uh, place that gonna be sold out or close to sold out. So it's uh, it, 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 it's really cool to be part of this moment in time. And uh, yeah, great, great uh, opening bands with us. We have Warbringer. For the first half, Cephalic Carnage. For the second half, uh, my son's Igor or uh, band Healing Magic is opening right. the show. Yeah, and it's cool because they're very, uh, they're super heavy, like neurosis kind of heavy. So it's a little bit different, you know. But I, the crowd really dig them, you know. So um, the first show we had was with Destruction and Nervosa, and that was just a throwback in the. For, <laughs> that is a throwback good, good old max cavalera headbanger i was on the side of the stage singing life without sense and you know reject emotions uh, mad butcher but when mad butcher came in i almost lost my shit man it was great <laughs> it was good to see those guys too you know they're good they're good guys you guys had an incredible history i mean from your humble beginnings you and igor and bellu Horizont to the worldwide acclaim that you have as far as the Cavalera name is concerned. Uh, what are you the most proud of, of the legacy that you've created throughout these, all of these years making music? That's a good question, man. That's a good, and it's, it's a hard to answer question. Um, could be many things, could be, um, could be the, the, the flame that, you, you help ignite on many other people's careers and and in and, and life. I think in general, just um, to me, I think, if, and, and that goes with everything that I've done, not, not Sepultura, you know, with Soulfly and everything, is the, 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 the fact that in, in a, 
in a way we made people uh, feel better through this music and that's great i think that's like that's cooler than than getting grammys and and uh, all that stuff is great don't get me wrong you know i i joke about that i say ah, grammys are like hemorrhoids event eventually every <laughs> asshole gets one uh you know <laughs> it, 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 you know it's 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 all in in fun and games but um really stuff that really gets me super excited is seeing from fans saying that stuff and seeing other guys in bands mention that they got started because of something you did you know and that's that's amazing and uh yeah man i think uh, you know that and 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 uh i'm passing the torch for my kids as well which i think is great you know like i you get to see them as a dad get to see them on the stage doing what you did it's especially igor he kind of looked like me it's the little skinny max cavalero of 1989 <laughs> you know um uh, He's got the long hair, man. He's yeah, it's awesome. Man. I get, I guess, I get super proud, like a like a proud dad, you know. Um, because it's it's funny, man. Because they were brought up in this world from birth. They are like I I, I joke, but there's a little truth in this joke. It was MMA fighters in Russia that the dad groomed them from when they're little young, you know, fighting bears and shit, you know. And groom them to become fighters, and they do. Probably a badass fighter as well. So it's kind of like the same thing, you know. Like I did my thing. I'm still doing it. I'm not hanging up yet, but um, I'm kind of like at the same time passing the torch for them now. You know, you guys run with this for a little bit too. You know, have fun, enjoy it. It's a uh, you know, you get to see a lot of cool things. There's a lot, it's a lot of hard work, but it's a lot of cool stuff, too. I, I, I got one last quick question for you. I know you're running out of time. And that is like, since you're on, on tour with Igor, are you guys working on some Cavalier conspiracy together, taking some time on the bus to put some tracks together? Hopefully we get to do a little bit. Yeah, we always get together in the front and, and, and talk about stuff, you know. Uh, yeah, eventually I have my guitar with me all the time because I'm always doing riffing you know so um eventually we we uh like i said there's a, a cool idea for hopefully next year to do something together um but we kind of like really focus on this tour try to make this tour as good as, as it can be and there's a little work still to be done um but yeah we're, we're definitely gonna definitely gonna do something in the future but uh yeah man hopefully we, yeah definitely we're gonna get a second leg including Canada and uh, Canadians got to see this. This is awesome. It's like, yeah, it's, we it's, want to. We it's want an amazing, to. All it's right, an amazing man. tour. It's really fun. It's really throwback stuff. It's, it's great. On that note, Max, thank you very much for your time today. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and uh, I'll see you when you come to Toronto. I'll give you a hug and uh, we'll be COVID free. So it'll be all good. <laughs> all right, my brother. <laughs> yeah. Take you care, stay man. Good, right? Yeah. yeah. Take Bye. care.